Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün New Jersey Institute of Technology'de bilim, teknoloji, mühendislik ve matematik özel programlarını Oyana ve Somi'den dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes, Somi, the stage is yours now. Thank you. Merhaba. Thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, my name is Somal Mehta. I'm the Assistant Director for International Recruitment here at New Jersey Institute of Technology. I'm so glad you have joined. I'm joined here today with our uh, another special guest, uh, the Dean of the R Management School, Dean Tuckel, and she will speak as well. Uh, so first, I'm going to give you a brief overview about NJIT, our program's admission process, uh, and then you can hear from the Dean of the Management School. Hi, so Mil, can you maximize your presentation, please? Yes, I'm trying. So NJIT, uh, we are Polytechnic Public Research University located in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, we offer over 120 degree programs and have over 135 research centers and labs. So we're a medium-sized university, about 11,400 students, of which about 1,800 international students. So we have a large international student population for a medium-sized university. Uh, our student faculty ratio is 15 to 1. So this faculty and students really get to know each other. We are Division I sports and offer over 140 clubs and organizations. Just some of our rankings. We are the top 10% of universities worldwide, number three in New Jersey and number 74 in the US by QS World Rankings. Uh, we're also a top national university, US News and World Report. Uh, the other one we're very proud about is receiving the highest research rating of R1 by Carnegie Classification. Uh, this just shows you the quality and the caliber of our students and faculty, our research centers and labs. Uh, only a select number of schools in the U.S., about 130, received its highest rating, and we're one of them. Our location, we are 20 minutes from New York City, but we are also about an hour and a half from Philadelphia, four and a half hours from Washington, D.C., and four and a half hours from Boston. So we're close to all the east, major East Coast cities. Our location itself, we are located in New Jersey's largest city of Newark. Uh, 30,000 students call this University Heights area home. So as I mentioned, we have about 11,400 and the other 20,000 or so other area colleges and universities. So it really is that college town atmosphere, but close to the big city. About 16 kilometers from New York City, as well as eight kilometers from Newark International Airport, making it easy access for direct flights overseas, as well as within the US. Just going to quickly go through our academic colleges uh, and what our program offerings are. We have the uh, Architecture and Design School. These are undergrad and graduate programs. Uh, it, next year, we're starting a Digital Design MS and MFA. Uh, our MS Architecture is a STEM degree. There's only two accredited architecture schools in the state of New Jersey, and we're one of them. Our College of Science and Liberal Arts. These are undergrad programs. Uh, some of our popular ones, biology, chemistry, some of our uni unique ones at the undergrad level, forensic science, cyber psychology, data science. And then at the graduate level, again, biology, chemistry, material science, some of our popular ones. 
Now, the Martin Tuckman School of Management, uh, the dean, dean will talk more, but just to give you an overview, uh, our undergrad programs in business and financial technology and our graduate programs, uh, we offer an MS in management and an MBA in management of technology, as well as a PhD in business data science. Uh, some of the unique points of our management school, uh, our students not only get the business skills needed in today's workforce, but they get the analytical skills, uh, they get access to Bloomberg terminals, Salesforce, so they are really in high demand when they graduate. Uh, the other unique points are MS management is a STEM degree, uh, which is rare across the U.S. in business schools, uh, so we do offer that, as well as unique programs uh, such as financial technology, which is a very hot field right now. Our Newark College of Engineering, these are undergrad program offerings, uh, biomedical, chemical, civil, electrical, just to name a few. And at the graduate level, again, materials, materials engineering, biomedical, civil, chemical, pharmaceutical, just to name a few. Our College of Computing, our undergrad program offerings, computer science uh, being popular, but also some unique programs that we offer at the undergrad level, human computer interaction, uh, data science as well. And at the graduate level, computer science, data science, uh, bioinformatics, business information systems. Now, for all freshmen, when you apply, uh, we are on the Common App, so you would apply through the Common App. There will be a question, would you like to be considered for the Honors College? The Honors College are for high uh, profile students, um, over 1,500 SATs, close to the 4.0 GPAs. Uh, there could be additional merit scholarship packages through them, as well as Honors Residence Housing, smaller class sizes, uh, things like that. Now, just to quickly go through our undergrad admissions criteria, uh, as I mentioned, freshmen apply through the Common App. We're generally looking for a 3.0 on the 4.0 scale. You would need the IELTS of 6.0, TOEFL of 79, or Duolingo of 100. Uh, the SAT, ACT is optional for next year, so uh, it is not required. Uh, unless you are applying to the Honors College, then they do require uh, your official transcripts, letter of recommendation, and if you're applying to any of the ARC, architecture programs, a portfolio uh, digitally submitted. Now, if you are studying currently at a university uh, and you're looking to transfer to us, these are the requirements. Generally, we're looking at a 2.8 out of 4.0 scale. Uh, again, you would need the IELTS TOEFL or Duolingo, the official transcripts. Uh, you would need a West transcript evaluation uh, for the transfer of credits uh, and also chemistry or physics, calculus as well. Now, for our graduate student applicants, uh, now, the GRE test will be required for fall 2022, as well as GMAT um, currently. Anything can change next year, but currently it is required for fall 2022. Uh, the TOEFL of 79, IELTS of 6.5, Duolingo of 120, uh, your official transcripts from colleges attended, uh, letter of recommendation for master's applicants, uh, three for PhD, and statement of purpose for PhD. Uh, again, portfolio if you're applying to any of our architecture programs. Now, here at NGIT, we operate under rolling admission. However, these are preferred deadlines, as you can see. So we strongly urge you to apply by that state. Uh, so there's enough time for the I-20 processing and your visa interview schedule. Uh, these are I-20 amounts that you must show in order to receive the I-20 uh, at the undergrad level, a little over 57,000, and at the graduate level, 55,000. Uh, all freshmen are automatically considered for any merit scholarships. So if you were to receive any merit scholarships, it would come off the tuition and fees. Uh, we offer pretty generous um, scholarship packages. Uh, and this is gonna be based on your overall academic record, but specifically also your any math and science courses you've taken, things like that uh, will be a factor in, in the merit uh, scholarship. And academic departments could have additional scholarships too. Um, and at the graduate level, most of our graduate programs are 30 credits at the master's level. Uh, we have, I would say, one of the top uh, career fairs in the area. Over 550 employers come to recruit at NGIT twice a year in the fall and spring. Uh, they're huge. So our career office is there to help our students with their resume writing, cover letter writing, prepare you for the interviews, uh, give you techniques. Uh, so you're ready for the job fairs.
All right. And again, I mentioned undergrad, uh, you're applying as a freshman through the Common App. Uh, transfer and graduate applicants would go through our online system. Everything can be submitted online. Uh, so you would upload your documents when you, once you submit your application. Uh, with that being said, uh, uh, anything further, I'm going to turn this over to my colleague, Dean Tufu from the Management School, so she can tell you about our wonderful programs in the Management School. Great. Thank you so much, Somil. Her Herkese merhaba, New Jersey, Newark, United States of America. Um, I will do my presentation in English so that there is consistency, Somil can understand what I'm talking about. And you're welcome to write your questions in Turkish uh, in the chat box. And uh, I'll I'll go over my few quick slides. And we wanted to have some time that we can chat. And th that part of it, we can absolutely do Turkish. You can ask questions in Turkish. So we'll do it just kind of a hybrid format. So I'll go ahead and share um, my slides. And please do not hesitate to put any questions that you might have. Uh, because this is an information session. The more you learn about us, the more you learn about studying in, in another country. So the, there are a lot of commonalities between us and um, uh, between us and all the other schools in the United States, but there are also differences that might be impacting your decision. So I do want uh maybe one of you telling me if this is looking okay screen large screen slides are okay yes it is yes yes okay wonderful all right great so as somil mentioned uh new jersey institute of technology is a technology school we are a polytechnic university so if you're not familiar what a polytechnic university is uh, Polytechnic University is research focused and applied science oriented university. So in Turkey, for example, Middle East Technical University, where I graduated from many years ago, is a polytechnic university like NJIT. Other polytechnic universities, technology universities you might be familiar with is, for example, MIT. It's Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So that's the Tech Institute of Technology in Massachusetts. And as you know, it's one of the top universities in the whole wide world. Uh, the one in New Jersey is called New Jersey Institute of Technology. So the Polytechnic Universities are only around 130 of them in the United States. It's just because it's very expensive to run these schools. That's because we do have a lot of labs and applied learning and applied teaching is critical for us. So that really do differentiate polytechnic universities from the rest of the universities. We are also specialized in few areas and whatever we teach, uh, whichever um, uh, college that you will go, you're going to be learning the knowledge which is wrapped around technology, even that is the case for business. That's why the business school here is very unique because it connects, it, it's, it's a combination of technology as well as the business concepts. So um, the trend from businesses, and you can uh, look at many of the articles coming out in Wall Street Journal, um, uh, Bloomberg, um, uh, and a lot of the white papers coming out from uh, like EY, Ernst & Young, PwC, they all do talk about the importance of technology and how everything is changing in the workplace. Uh, so you're not at a workplace yet, or maybe you are for graduate students, for students who are interested in graduate uh, studies, but the, the, the workspace is changing. It's changing very rapidly and without an understanding of technology, uh, it's really difficult to find jobs uh, in United States as well as in Turkey around the world. So the, the workplace uh, in the next so many years are going to be very different than the workplace where I have been in. Um, the, the, the savvy being savvy, understanding the language of technology, being able to uh, use software, modeling, algorithm development, uh, all the all the things that a computer science student you think would know, 
is now is everywhere and all of our students need to know. So what differentiates our school and JIT is the emphasis given to technology. So we can guarantee you that you're going to have, you know, an amazing and a leading understanding of technology in the discipline you choose. We're also unique in the sense that we are one campus. A lot of our programs share courses. So that creates a lot of unique programs that are not available elsewhere. So um, as I will mention in a minute, we have financial technology, which is the only bachelor science degree program in New Jersey, and maybe one of the very few in the nation is a combination of finance knowledge as well as um, 12 courses of computer science. So we teach you how to develop an app we teach you how to use Python for modeling, but then you apply all of that technical skills in a finance setting. So obviously the uh, job opportunities are amazingly high in this area. It's just because we're right across from Manhattan and most of the Wall Street companies and the consultant companies working with big data around finance are all in need of graduates our students and graduates. So you really have to be very mindful of how you choose the schools. Please don't choose the schools only based on what your friends are deciding to, you know, go or, you know, how the campus looks like. Uh, it's all about, you know, what's going on in the curriculum, who the faculty are and how connected they are with the businesses, uh, you know, around the campus. Location matters a great deal you really have to be close to a bigger city where the opportunities are. And obviously this area, tri-state area is how we call it. New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, um, and even, you know, Massachusetts and, uh, you know, Connecticut, they, the, 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 those areas, very highly skilled workforce uh, and hundreds and thousands of uh, businesses around us. So uh, that really matters in terms of finding an internship that really matters in terms of finding your work opportunities. United States unemployment rate is extremely low. It's almost like below 4% now. I know it's not the case in Turkey, but we have an amazing, you know, job opportunities going on this year. So sometimes, you know, bad things happen like COVID, but then that creates some opportunities unexpectedly. So. Um, so right now, uh, job openings are amazingly high, um, especially in the technology sector. And I, when I say technology, I'm talking about companies who are using technology in their business processes. And that not only includes the technology companies like uh, Google, AWS, you know, Amazon World Services, uh, PayPal, but also a lot of pharmaceutical companies uh, and a lot of manufacturing fully automated companies are in high need of skilled workers. And when they say skilled, they're talking about skilled to use technology, work with technology. Um, uh, that's the workplace where, you know, uh, where you will be working. Um, of course, as Samil mentioned, uh, technology enabled us to move forward quickly my school, Martin Tuckman School of Management, is one of the top 130 uh, business schools. We are accredited by an international business school accreditation body. It's called AACSB. So what is an accreditation guarantees you is, is that who, whoever is in the class is qualified to teach and their research relates to what they teach. Um, so accredited schools do make a difference in terms of the quality of teaching, as well as the resources that we provide to our students. Um, when we talk about uh, resources, we're talking about uh, resources in the form of networking opportunities with businesses, bringing quite a bit of, uh, uh, you know, uh, executives managers from the New York City area, from Newark area to come to classes, to talk to you, to show you about, you know, what their business is and, you know, how they are working with the, um, um, 
you know, uh, students. Uh, many of them do accept internships. Uh, resources are also, many of them are digital. You have access to databases that we uh, subscribe that are very expensive. For example, I subscribe Bloomberg data from a uh, stock market. So that brings real data um, in real time to our students to be able to do transactions in stock market, which we teach it as a course as well, the investment. Um, and all of the, that is available to students free of charge. So those are all um, you know, different types of resources that will be available to you. Uh, Polytechnic universities are also excellent in terms of their entrepreneurship programs. So we do have an entrepreneurship program that is ranked number one in New Jersey and number 34 in the nation. That's because a lot of our students team up with their classmates or students from other programs and come up with new product ideas. A lot of the computer science students team up with business students to come up with new apps, apps in healthcare, applications in financial technology, and they go around and pitch their ideas and get funding to start their uh, companies. So some of them are on uh, TV presenting their pro products and many of them get investors' attention. So because the, the understanding of technology will enable you to be able to use it, uh, you know, to come up with great ideas. We have quite a bit of labs in here that you can prototype your idea. We teach you as a business student, like a mechanical engineering or a computer student, we teach you how to use machines in here so that you can prototype a new pair of shoes. You can prototype a new, you know, um, uh, product that can be used in healthcare. You can produce a fake, you know, uh, artificial knee that can be used in medicine. So a lot of those, it's like a playground here. It's a lot of it is available to you. There's so many opportunities and students benefit greatly from all those. Um, there are a few things that I want to also mention. Uh, so uh, as a polytechnic university, we can't grow up too much. So we limit how, how big we are. It's just because we are very applied and research institute with, within the lab. So the lab size uh, matters. That's why a typical uh, ratio here is 14 to 1. Uh, the largest class size is 39. We limit all of our classes at 39. Um, and we do, we do provide, uh, of course, advising uh, opportunities for all of our students, even if you decide to come here, uh, but you're not here yet. We do provide academic advising so that you can choose your courses accordingly. Um, as well as we do provide mentoring. It's called peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. So we, we team you up with a student who has who have been here. It can be a junior or a senior who, uh, uh, who becomes a mentor to a freshman or a student who is coming you know, from another school. Uh, we help the stu student to get used to the campus, get used to our courses, classes. We invite them to events so they kind of keep an eye on you, talk to you, so that adjustment to the college life is going to be easier for you. Um, so the placement, job placement rate is excellent here in this region, uh, which makes sense, right? Because of the number of businesses we have, we do have a great success rate with our international students as well, especially right now, um, we do have uh, a lot of, you know, uh, available positions uh, that companies are trying to fill with employment. Uh, so our students go, international students go internship, and after their graduation, they get what we call their OPT and be able to stay here. In the technical areas, you can stay here for up to three years with the OPT. So especially for STEM designated, um, as far as I know, so correct me if I'm wrong, but FinTech financial technology in the BS degree is also STEM degree because of the, it, it, the content is all technology. So, so the sciences and technology focused programs are STEM designated that will 
enable you to go to internship and stay up to three additional years after graduation. And many times, you know, if you stay with a company and show how, how good you are, they are going to, you know, uh, apply for work permit for you to stay and be productive there. Okay, so I mentioned a lot of skill-based education, which is very important for us. We have many laboratories, including we do have a, a data observatory that's not being listed here, but that's a big data is, is what a lot of students learn how to, how to manipulate and how to manage. So we do have a space available. We call it data observatory where, uh, you know, the screens can provide a lot of different visuals, data related visuals on, on one area. A um, lot of researchers and students who work on projects love to be in that space. In addition, we do have an investment lab where we call it financial lab. So you can do day trading, you can do investing in that lab because we are connected to the stock market. Um, and we do provide quite a bit of, agree we have agreements with Salesforce and IBM where you can non-credit your own pace, your own time, get a lot of certifications uh, through our agreements. Um, we do ask students to participate in conferences, attend seminars. There are a lot of summer research support available. We give students $3,000 to work on research with the faculty. So a lot of those are uh, available to you uh, in addition to curriculum. And that's how the education goes these days. It's not only in the classroom, it's not exams and homeworks. There are a lot of other ways of learning so we, we, we expect students to do a lot of projects, do, you know, work with businesses as well as uh, get involved in campus activities. A lot of the clubs we have teach you a lot of different skills. So all of that is going to make you a career ready, uh, you know, student. So that's very important that you get the most out of the campus, what campus offers, not only your degree. Um, so we do have, I'll quickly go over um, the programs we have. Uh, in, the, uh, in the undergraduate level, we have BS in business. And please note that this is a, a degree in science, right? Bachelors of Science in business and Bachelors of Science in financial technology. So when you are looking for degrees, pay attention if it is a BBA or BS, so because we are a technology school, we give a science degree to a business student. So that makes a big deal. Again, when you are looking for a job, bachelor's of science is a more difficult degree. I have to say it's just because it is a, a science degree being awarded, although you are in the business program. Um, there are different majors. We have accounting, finance, entrepreneurship, MIS, Management Information Systems, and Marketing. All of these majors do require you to learn the um, technology integrated part of the area. So what I mean is that in accounting, we teach you how to you know, work with accounting data. So we have data analytics courses in accounting. Information systems and accounting go hand in hand. It's just because that's what accounting turn into. We also ask you to take artificial intelligence class because again, artificial intelligence is part of accounting today. Um, finance is investment, uh, corporate finance, as well as financial technology. Entrepreneurship courses teach you how to write a business plan, how to pitch your ideas, how to get funding for your ideas. Um, management information system courses, quite a bit of them are taken from the computer science, and that is the foundations of activities within a corporation, right? How the, how the units communicate with each other and use the systems. Um, marketing is more digital marketing. We teach students how to, um, have to do marketing in the social media. Um, there is a lot of data gathering, data summarization, and visualization tools we teach students. 
and uh, digital marketing is also becoming a very popular degree in United States. It's just because marketing is all digital right now, and it's all in in in, in internet websites and social media. So BS in fintech, financial technology, is very popular. We started that with a cohort this year, actually. Um, and as you see over here, quite a bit of the courses do require you to understand uh, computer science, um, uh, all the way from data mining to machine learning, the data analytics. But as I mentioned before, this is the future. This is what future require you, require you to have. If you're graduating from a program that doesn't have these areas, uh, that they don't teach you, I can guarantee you in a few years you have to come back to school and learn them because you cannot really advance in your careers unless you have a good understanding of computer science. Okay, so for the graduate program, we have Master's in Management. Again, it's Master of Science because it's a science degree. It's also STEM designated. Um, it is a short 30 credit program. Um, and, you know, students typically finish it in a year and a half. The reason is because uh, students come in the fall and spring, they take classes, end of the spring, they do their internship and then come back and finish up the program in the fall so that they can do an internship that can turn into a, uh, you know, job opportunity after they finish it up. So according to the immigration uh, you know, like the F1 status, uh, that works out best for them. But if you wanted to do it in one year, you can take 15 credit every semester and be able to finish it in two semesters. So a lot of the students come and check things out and decide how they want to do it. But typically a three semester will allow you to do your internship during the summer between the spring and the fall semester. Um, we do have an MBA program. Our MBA program is 48 credits. Um, and it is it typically recruits students from this region and a lot of them are working. So the networking opportunity is amazing in the program. A lot of the part-time students get a chance to work with, you know, professionals from this area who are here for MBA. So that absolutely introduces you a lot of different companies a good networking opportunity for jobs. Um, and then we have certificates that you can take um, that you can use it towards a degree. Um, and these are, you know, IT sales and analytics is a new one. It's based on Cisco, uh, you know, um, uh, helped us design this certificate. But obviously, if you come for a certificate, you this is going to give you 12 credits. You might as well do another, you know, uh, 15, 16 credits and get a degree as well. But your certificate can be used towards a degree, a graduate degree. All these credits count. And um, we do have a PhD program. It's in business data science. And we are actually opened up for uh, applications this semester. We do it every two years. And the PhD program um, is is an integration of data science and the business. So that's an, another uh, uh, another uh, technology company loves this program. So it's a little bit competitive, I have to say, but if you're really interested in getting a PhD, um, so we are accepting applications uh, as I speak, you know, so if you're interested, contact us and we can kind of guide you with the application process. Okay, so the, I will not go too much into these, you know, details in terms of the curriculum is in our websites. Um, uh, the MSM uh, curriculum allows you to choose a concentration area. This is the master's in management. Uh, most of our students are in business analytics and financial technology. We have engineers who came back for global project management uh, uh, concentration. And then we have some interest in web systems and media. Um, for MBA, uh, MBA is a little more longer, right? 48 credits, but not only it allows you to have a concentration area, but we have a concept called MBA plus. So as you're taking your MBA, 
if you choose the courses that we tell you for, for example, marketing or finance, you also get a certificate. So for 48 credits, not only you get a degree, MBA degree, but also a certificate of your choice. Um, we do have custom concentration in the MBA. We have 12 credits of um, any course that you want to take from campus. So you might be interested in uh, cyber psychology. You might be interested in virtual design and you can go to different colleges and sign up for their courses and use it as part of your MBA. You can choose a information system certificate from computer science and that can be your custom concentration so you not only get an MBA degree but also get a certificate so although it's a 48 credit programs it gives you two degrees so that's why that is also an interest to students just just because not only you get a certificate to show that you specialize in a technical area but also you have a very good understanding of the management. That's your MBA. All right, so we said quite a bit about NJIT, our accreditations. Um, so um, we are not too big. There are some big in research institutes. There are thousands of students in their programs. The more students you have, the less opportunity they will have to take advantage of the resources. So I do strongly recommend that you go to medium or small size schools where people will know you with your name. You can have opportunities on campus. Um, and one thing I also wanna mention is that you can be employed on campus up to 20 hours. A lot of our international students work and study at the same time on campus. So in this region, the you know hourly rate is $15 an hour. So you can get actually a good amount of pocket money to be able to, you know, cover your maybe food expenses that way. And also work experience is a work experience. So you can put that experience in your resume. You can um, work on campus in the offices. So I, for example, hire students for my office to help us out during the day-to-day -day activities of my office, but also you might work for, um, you know, Sawmill's office, or we have, um, we also have job opportunities in the labs. We hire a lot of students to help us in the uh, labs as well. So those are all paid. Um, in addition to that, we do have a lot of merit-based scholarship. That means for your success. If you have good GPA, you will be eligible for scholarships. We do not differentiate, for example, last year I gave $117,000 scholarship and those scholarships are um, available to anybody, right? I, we do not differentiate US students from international. Everybody is in the same pot. We look at who is a good student and we allocate scholarships. Scholarships usually help. It doesn't completely eliminate your tuition and fees, but they definitely help you, especially as an international student that will definitely help you reduce the cost so everybody does it that way they bring they have to pay some and then they find scholarships work opportunities to support themselves a little bit more so a lot of our students do it that way and you know before you know it you get your degree so um so it is possible here is a lot of our employees as you see are from high tech all these companies do have offices here in this region Prudential is a big company here and it's an insurance company. They hire quite a bit of our students. Um, and then as you see, we have banks in here, we have IBM, we have uh, Novartis, you know, pharmaceutical company, uh, consultant companies in accounting and finance like Deloitte, uh, PwC, uh, Johnson & Johnson is headquartered here in New Jersey. So they also hire a lot of our students as well. We have quite a bit of students who are either part of a club or they start their own club. So um, the one that is um, that is popular is investment club because they have real money, $125,000, and they learn how to invest in the stock market in the New York Stock Exchange. 
using this money so you can be part of this club as well as we have clubs that teach you how to design and you know use a drone we have clubs that teach you how to present yourself teach you how to make a pitch uh, and then we have um, like salesforce club where salesforce provide resources to students and you can learn more about the salesforce software you go visit their headquarters I do have an executive student leadership council and they work with me to make decisions that benefits the students. So they're part of the part of the governance of the university uh, students get involved in how we run the school. OK, these are some examples of experiential projects our students work on. They developed, they designed and, you know, uh, prepare a business plan for a coffee house on campus. They did the same thing with a container that is that was located at a hospital. That's an extended capacity for a hospital beds um, during COVID time. We do organize TEDx. You might be familiar with TEDx. So that's a very prestigious program. Every year we do TEDx. We have quite a bit of speakers, different topics. Um, we're, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, technology schools are really different because you can offer very interesting courses. So one of the courses that we are offering this semester is, um, it's called Spaces Open for Business. So we did teach, one of the faculty teaches students all the entrepreneurial effort that goes into uh, you know, um, uh, uh, space exploration. So it's not NASA or a government that looks at space. There are now so many companies that are um, in the travel to space. They are collecting all the metal garbage from the space. Uh, they are, you know, investigating the agriculture that relates to the space. There's healthcare related and space related startups. So there are quite a bit of, I think, $16 billion investment in space, uh, you know, exploration, space technology. Um, and we do teach students what is out there and how they can invest in, in that or how they can start up a business that relates to space. And you don't have to be an astronaut to do that. Any businessman can do that, as you know, all these you know, uh, Virgin Atlantic, um, as well as Elon Musk, they're uh, heavily investing in space because that's a new economy out there that we should be paying attention to. Uh, we also have students going to hospitals because they use a system called EPIC. It's on the left hand side. So the EPIC system is everywhere around the world being used system for hospital that collects that has data about the patient billing you know pharmaceutical pharmacy so um, uh, we teach students how to configure epic and we have an agreement with the hospital uh, right in this area who accept you know um, four of our uh, students to do a long internship actually two semester internship uh, to teach and also do project with epic and almost all of them received a job offer to stay in the hospital and continue using the EPIC system. This is our investment lab. This is our data observatory. And we also have a new program in real estate technology design and innovation. So real estate is very big in New York City. You probably know one of the best you know, uh, real estate investments are in New Jersey and New York. So uh, we have a new center uh, on the right hand side. The tall gentleman, Paul Profeta, invested, gave us funding to start the real estate. It's under my school. Uh, I'm currently directing the center. So we are teaching real estate technology courses. Um, and you might think, what's that real estate technology? Well, everything connected, right? Everything that you can remotely control, Internet of Things. Uh, we also talk about, you know, apps that enable you to get mortgages for your house, connecting the, uh, you know, homeowner with the renters. 
managing property. It's all technology based. So we teach how that technology works in a real estate setting. So that's a new program we have in our school. And there is a center that does research in real estate technology and design. So this is just a little picture of it. And we have great faculty in our school. And I want to ma make sure that, you know, um, you are all very aware that faculty makes the whole difference, right? Who is in the class teaching you and what kind of research they do makes a world of difference in your education. All right, so 1047, I'll stop here. I think we have a few minutes to answer your questions. Um, and I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope you did have a good understanding of who we are, what we do. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Don't hesitate, please. I don't know how the format is, Zainab, but uh, is it only chat or do they talk? It's, I think answer anything. It's on the question section. Yeah, so I've been answering on the questions section and chats. Uh, so if there's any others or can the can they speak or just in these two options? Just if they, if they can speak, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like Somil has answered some of the questions, but we also have uh, other questions. Uh, can you answer those two, please? Uh, Okay, if you see any that I've missed. Um, so I answered in the chat as well as all the questions in the questions tab. Uh, if you cannot find, I can just send it to you. Sure, if there's any that I've missed yet because of, I think I got most of them. Uh, do you? Do you estimate the GPAs below 3.0 immediately, or are those students still have a chance? What is the effect of having a GMAT GI score in addition? I'm asking for graduate programs. So yes, I mean, the graduate, that's a sort of, we have a minimum um, overall requirement. However, all parts of your application are gonna be reviewed. So there's, you know, if you're close, uh, that doesn't mean you're gonna get rejected if you don't meet that. Uh, you could still be admitted if you're close to that. Uh, a range, uh, depending on everything else. Um, will a GMAT score, GRE, I mean, so for fall 2022 is required. So yes, uh, if you have a high score, that's going to help um, with the process too, of course. So I think for um, for GMAT and GRE, uh, so we do have right now uh, considering students who are close to three or three and above, uh, will get their GMATs waived, but it's from uh, it changes from college to college. So the business school um, is going to be, you know, uh, looking at your GPA from the, you know, uh, graduating school. If you are coming to, un, uh, you know, uh, uh, the master's program, so your undergraduate program, you know, GPA is what we are going to be looking at, and if it is three and above. Um, you will be, you know, you don't have to present your uh, GMAT GRE score. Um, if you're coming to PhD program, you have to take GMAT or GRE and, you know, uh, uh, you know, send it with your application. But for master's and MBA, uh, you can come in without a GMAT, uh, without GMAT or GRE score. Yes, thank you for your answers. Also, we have another question. I will... Can you give more information regarding scholarship and grants for an international? Okay, so as I was mentioning, uh, for freshmen, if you're an undergrad freshman applicant, you're automatically going to be considered for merit scholarships. Uh, there's no separate application for that. Uh, you know, we are looking at your overall academic record, your STEM courses that you've taken, uh, 
at the graduate level, uh, it can vary from department to department. I know the management school may have small uh, uh, scholarships available that they'll consider you for, uh, but generally at the graduate level, the master's level, it's rare to have a big merit scholarships uh, in most departments. Yeah. Uh, there is for the PhD, there is funding, yes, for PhD students. So for master's and MBA, we do have a few, you know, uh, scholarships available, uh, but they are offered after you come here and show some grades, right? Yeah. So if you come the first year and we look at your GPA, you would be considered uh, for scholarships. These scholarships are uh, based on donors, like donors give us money to distribute to students, and those are the monies we give to students. So it's not as you're coming in. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's something very commonly we do for undergraduate, as Somil was mentioning. But for graduate students, after you come, based on your GPA, NJIT GPA, you will be able to able to get some uh, to support your uh, studies. Um, you know, I also say uh, here at NJIT, we have partnered with the Outside Scholarship Universe. It's a company where once you're admitted, you could search for outside scholarships that you might um, qualify for and apply for those. Uh, they could be small scholarships, but we've had success from some, you know students receiving a few thousand dollars. Every penny counts. So yeah. there is that as well that not other university students get, but our students do get access. Yes, thank you for your answers too. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is our last question. Sure. Is the SAT so as I mentioned, uh, the SAT ACT is optional for for next uh, year for twenty twenty two. Unless you're looking to be considered for the Honors College, then it is required. So if you're just applying traditional freshman um, without Honors consideration, then no, it is not a requirement. It is optional. Yes, thank you for the explanations. Uh, it looks like you covered all of the questions. Uh, is there anything you would like to add before we wrap up? So I think... Um, Somil and my email addresses will be available to students. So we'll be happy to answer any other questions they might have. Uh, please don't hesitate to uh, contact us. Uh, so uh, Som Somil, you, you want to put both of our emails in the chat? do that, yes. Chat? Do that right yes. now. So, and we wish you best of luck. Hopefully you will reach your goals. Uh, regardless of where you are, going to a uh, university, getting more educated is always, you know, the right decision. That's how I at least believe. So, um, and, and, and thank you for spending time with us today. I wish we would be able to see you. This is the hard part with these webinars that we talk and we say a lot of things and I cannot really get to see you guys face to face. But hopefully when things get better, we can become more mobile. Uh, Somil goes everywhere in Turkey, so happy to, you know, get a chance to meet with you face to face uh, as well. Yes, thank you very much for the great presentation, uh, Somil and Oya Hanım. It was really informative for the attendees and you covered all of the questions. Thank you for your answers too. And uh, also, I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Umarım sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. New Jersey Institute of Technology ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için chat kısmında paylaşılmış olan mail adreslerinden Somil ve Oya Hanım'a ulaşabilirsiniz. Ee, yarınki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you very much again, you guys. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you so much. Everyone Hoş take care. Kalın. Görüşürüz. <gülüyor> Take care. Bye bye.